Okay. Um, I forgot how to do a podcast intro because <laughs> it's been so long. You've been out of the game a little bit too We long. say hi. We say welcome, blah, blah, blah. What's this thing called? Dusty dirt or <laughs> dirty dirt, dust. dirt and dust or <laughs> dirt two plus two? Oh, it's dirt to dust. Dirt to dust. Welcome, Bethany. everyone, including my brain, back to <laughs> dirt to dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. It has been a while. I know. Um, it feels like luckily forever. Luckily for me. Oh, man. I, it, I know it hasn't, but. I guess traveling and doing all that makes you feel like it's been forever. But luckily for me, uh, the wonderful, talented co-host, Mr. Caleb Forbes, became the wonderful, talented lead host. And I think you did an episode with uh, Ryan. I actually listened to most of that um, on one of my travel days. I did not get to listen to some of it, but I did see uh, pretty typical of an episode between you and him. There was a Porsche reference. So as long as you hit that <laughs> bar yeah. and there was a Porsche reference there, or there some was. kind of old Jeep reference, Oh, there was That's old Jeep reference, the there was Porsche reference, oh, yeah. there was jokes about XJs. We covered the the whole yep. nine there. So you hit the um you hit all the Caleb and Ryan episode benchmarks absolutely. that I expected two of you to hit. So, yeah, so absolutely. well done there. Uh other than that, are we calling can we call this the Caleb birthday episode? Is that can we do that? Uh post birthday episode. I mean by the by the time <laughs> by the time the episode comes out, I thought we were actually gonna film this. I was like, oh, we're gonna try and do this yesterday, and I was gonna pop that because then I'm only like one business day late. Yeah, <laughs> technically, like we're technically, yeah. Business day yeah. Late, and I'm like, because I was like, should I message him like everybody else is doing on Facebook? Because everybody does that now. Like, yeah. oh, happy HBD or happy birthday. I'm like, and it's, and it's only because know. Facebook notifies you that it's a birthday. It, it's yeah. and I'm like, you know what? It's all right. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him on on a podcast episode because he's going <laughs> to think I forgot. He's going to be all in his feelings. Like, I can't uh, believe he forgot. Can't believe Doug so, but I actually have a thing in the, um, in the employee system that mm -hmm. reminds me like a week out of when people's birthdays are. That's Cause awesome. I don't dude, I'll forget. Oh I'll yeah. Forget. I forget. I've got I, them in my, uh, phone I know calendar. a few dates, uh, but it's a few and, and yeah. they're not. Mm -mm. I have a problem. Remember my own freaking birthday. Thank yeah, I don't even care. So I'm the type anyway. of person that, uh, I'll typically like to text or call someone. Happy birthday and tell them happy birthday versus writing it on their wall unless I really just don't know them that well. <clears throat> and when you do that on an I iPhone, I just do it on a podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the best way to do it. But when you do it on an <laughs> iPhone, it actually uh, updates and you can uh, save their birthday and it gives you a little reminder. So that's kind of cool. Oh, man, we, are, we are so dependent on technology. And I'm not even going to lie, man. The guy who wheels a four by E. Uh, and speaking of wheeling a four by E, speaking of so, four by E, yeah. So the original, I think originally the whole plan weeks ago was hey, we're going to come back from Moab, we're going to do a mob Moab wrap up. And right as we were getting to talk about this, JP from Rock Crawler, Jeremy Purick, texts me out of nowhere. He's like, hey, man, um, I think I should be on your your Mob Moab episode. And I'm like, how do you even know we're going to do I guess he just assumed so. <laughs> Must be a yeah. listener. He knew it was coming. So I said, absolutely. Let's try to get the schedules together. So we're, we're doing a little bit of a shift here. We'll kind of hint a little bit at the Moab thing. But this is today's topic is going to definitely be because of Mob Moab. Mm -hmm. Um and and it's an episode all about spotting and spotters and how to spot, how not to spot, and just we're gonna we're gonna thank some spotters. We're gonna talk some crap about some bad spotters, and we're just gonna <laughs> hopefully you can spot me through this episode. And then we got a little bit of a oh, surprise yeah. at the end for all of those. If you can make it through the spotter episode, there is gonna be a little bit of a surprise for you. So without further ado, let's jump into the dirt to dust spotter episode. When other people see dirt. You see glory, and when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, and welcome back. Like Doug said, we've got a pretty cool episode today. Um... And following Mob Moab, and uh, probably because some events of Mob Moab, something I wanted to talk about, and something I've wanted to talk about for a little <laughs> while on this show, um, is the importance of a good spotter. Um, I think Doug and I both have some experience with both good and bad spotters. Um, 
and probably a couple <laughs> stories to tell in between. So oh, first yeah. things first, Doug, um, in your opinion, what makes a spotter a good, quote unquote, good spotter? Uh, yeah, so there's definitely a difference and I've seen very freaking awesome spotters and, and there's not like one way to spot. Like I know spotters that are great and do it one way. And then I know spotters that are great to do it a completely different way. And like how they line you up on the line and you know, when they tell you to kind of roll through or when they tell you to send it. So I think, but it all comes from experience. Um, when you've, when you've run X trail, Y trail, whatever trail before, and you've seen, uh, how it changes over the years, you know, just not, you know, I ran this trail one time in 2017, probably not a good qualifier, but I ran it in 2017. Then I came back a couple years later. Then I came out, you know, maybe it's something out West. You know, I did this in 17 then I did it on another trip in 18 and then I hit it again. So you see how the trail changes. So you have the experience, you know, where the obstacles are, you know, what's coming up, you know, whether to orient them right side, left side, center, whatever. I mean, in some cases, you know, Hey, I need driver tire right here. So I think experience is, um i think experience is the number one um and then unfortunately patience because uh a good spotter has to understand that you're not going to be listened to a lot like it just is what it is i but i'd say experience is number one followed by a decent amount of a decent amount of patience and then you know maybe maybe on kind of the the the, the thing you can't see or touch is just some people just have a natural ability to see a line um, even if they haven't been on it before. And I've, and I've known those people and I've kind of been that guy on a trail or two. I'm definitely not that guy all the time. Um, but there have been, you know, I'll roll up on trails I haven't done before and I'm in the lead on a trail or it's my event or whatever. And it's, it's, you can see the different lines and you can just know, okay, well, a two door is going to do this and a four door is going to do this. So, um, I think that all goes back to experience too, of just understanding how something's going to react suspension, geometry, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so just being able to see that line, but I guess that's still it's still experience, experience and patience. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. And the patience is one thing I think a lot of people don't have. Um, you can have a lot of experience, but if you're not patient with someone, even a couple, especially if it takes a couple tries, or you're dealing, or you're spotting someone who doesn't have experience wheeling. Um, there's a lot of of trust that has to happen in between that, and kind of unspoken. Um, so yeah, uh, the patience I think is the more important part. The the experience for sure definitely comes into play on that, uh, and definitely experience over several different types of rigs, different type of wheelbases, different tire sizes, because every one of those are going to react a little bit differently. Um, mm -hmm. But going from there, would you just say a bad spotter is just someone without experience, or someone just what what would cause someone just to like not be a good spotter at all? No, I think ego more than anything makes a bad spotter. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. I think okay. people, I don't know why people think it's like cool to be the spotter. Like you're looked up on if like you're a spotter, I'm a cooler realer than you. I don't, I don't know where that comes from. Um, but I definitely think ego not being kept in check is probably the worst quality that you have in a spotter because it gives you this false you know, it gives you this false confidence that you know exactly what the rig's going to do. You know exactly everything's going to uh, react when you don't have the experience to back it up. Now that confidence that you have is felt by that driver, and that driver's like, okay, this 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 dude or dudette knows what they're doing, and I can place my trust in them because as a driver, I've told countless drivers, if I'm spotting you, your vehicle is a remote control vehicle. I'm driving it. You're just doing what I tell you to do. I may not be in the vehicle, but just treat it as if I'm driving it. If I tell you this, tell you that you're a remote control car. And I think when we have that kind of understanding, it seems to work um, a lot better. Um, but I think if you don't, if you don't know what you don't know, or you think that the rig, especially if you think the vehicle, you're just dead sure that the vehicle is going to react a certain way and it just doesn't, um, you know, people can get hurt. Rigs can get hurt. Um, feelings can get hurt. <laughs> Bank accounts can get hurt. <laughs> So I think, you know, and that could be, you know, going back to making a good spot or keeping your ego in check. But I think the number one worst quality in a bad spotter would just be just too much ego. And, and it, you know, it's not that there's some narcissistic jerk, just, you know, just having a little too much ego. And, you know, it's not like, you know, we made the shirts for Moab. We call them the trail brush shirts. And we were kind of making fun of people like that. Um, unfortunately, they got printed on the wrong color. So we ended up just giving a bunch of them away. So we're having them reprinted on the right color, but it was basically this graphic that said, and, and, and we can superimpose this here. It was like, 
just making fun of like the quote unquote trail leader, somebody that thinks that's just their personality. <laughs> and it was like, what was it like trail leader yeah. and leader was scratched out. Then it was like trail guide, but guide got way more scratched out. Then it was like trail boss. Cause like Jeep clubs do this like, Oh, someone says our trail boss. And they like, they elect these people. And I'm like, man, that's yeah. crazy. And mm -hmm. then at the bottom, it just said, bruh. <laughs> And I'm like, bruh. I don't need a title. I, just call me bruh. Like, no. call me bruh. Give me bruh. a turkey slider at the end of the day, and I'm happy. Like, maybe a Snickers bar or <laughs> some Lunchables. Or is uh, uh, everybody knows how much I love Candace my trail Lunchables. Just posted into uh, Nashville, a PB and J Uncrustable, <laughs> and you're good to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Lunchable guy. Oh, everybody man. knows this about me. I'm 100% a Lunchable guy, except when we're in Moab, and then you have access to the Maverick, and then I get the turkey and cheese sliders on the. King's Hawaiian yes. bread, which is oh my God. Yeah. Every day I'm oh. in there at seven, seven thirty in the morning grabbing the turkey sliders because of the King's Hawaiian bread. So yeah, we were just kind of making fun of people like that. Cause I think that kind of mentality can get people in trouble. So I mean, if you're out there spotting and you don't have the experience, that's cool. But take your time, slow down. I mean, obviously, if you're in a group and you're on a trail that nobody in your group has, you know, is super experienced on, I'm not saying stay home. Like go out there, adventure, figure it out just understand what you got right like and just be slow it down take it easy take your time and that's how you learn i think that, you know that's also a great way to learn it's just kind of trial by fire but slow burn don't explode yeah no i like that that's a uh, that's definitely some good advice there um it's probably one i'll be taking here pretty soon as the lg gets finished up and i'm back out on the trail and um probably do helping people and do the same thing because spotting is something that I've learned to love to do. I was very nervous about it at first because obviously you've got the responsibility of another driver and a rig in your hands. And if that person is totally trusting you, then, you know, that's again, a lot of trust there. Uh, if they're not totally trusting you and they want to do their own thing, even though you're spotting them and they go a different direction, they still blame it on you. <laughs> So, yeah, that's, but that's it's like a two edged sword because should be the more seriously. you trust the spotter, the better it is. If you implicitly trust your spotter and just do whatever they tell you, um, if, if all things work, if you're listening to a good qualified spotter, you're going to run that obstacle faster, quicker, better. You're going to feel better about it. Um, so, but it, yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I mean, I don't, I don't let everybody spot for me. Like if I don't trust you, I'm just going to be like, yo, let me either you know, just let somebody else spot for me. I mean, I'm used to kind of, a lot of times I'm in the front, so I don't, I mean, we make the joke, like I don't get mm -hmm. a spotter. So like, I got to just kind of figure crap out or like, <laughs> but there are some times yeah. like, you know, there's certain obstacles. Like I know I need to put a passenger front there. I can't see my passenger front. So I will, I have done that many times where I've gotten somebody who may not be like a quote unquote spotter, but I'll be like, look, this is what I need to see in my rig. I need, I need you to make sure my tire is right there and then get out of the way. And that's still spotting to me. I mean, you know, I'm teaching and you're learning too. You're like, okay, well, that's where he put his and that's a four door. That's a this. Now you're learning. Um, but I'm also giving somebody else the opportunity to spot me. But, you know, because, you know, sometimes you need that. Everybody needs a spotter at, at some point. Sometimes. At some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The absolutely. trust. Yeah. There's, there's, there's two or three spotters in this world that I will do whatever they tell me. And, and I just know I'm just not worried about it. I'm just, it's what it is. And if they Who tell me to go people? two millimeters to the left. Um, well, the one I was about to make fun of is JP, um, because he will spot you to within a freaking ant's leg. It's insane. And if you're about a half a centimeter off, he'll back you off and, and reset you. I might, I might, I, I might be a little bit, no, I'm pretty accurate on that. And then, you know, you got a guy like Gerald Lee, who's like, he's very much, I, I, I spot a lot, a little bit like him, especially on the, uh, the West coast or East coast, I should say is Gerald Lee is a very much angle of the rig driver tire here. And then he'll back off and go, all right, roll from there. And it just, and he does the hand motion every time and he just kind of backs off and it's like, ah, okay, go. Um, but he's an old school race guy. He, you know, he builds stuff to go fast. That's kind of his personality. Um, and that's just what it is. But, you know, implicit trust of like, if you tell me to do something that I am not believing, but I'll still do it. Um, Jeremy's the number one. I mean, I, most of the lines I've spotted out West, I learned from him um, and just watching him do it and then being spotted by him. So there's a lot of people that I'll kind of listen to, but there's only one or two out there that I will just, just trust implicitly and be like, all right, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, that's um no, I think those are two two great people. Um I have not had the honor of having either one spot me yet, but that is uh I'm sure that, that day is coming soon for sure. It's not um, Jeremy well, speaking gets of uh you. you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned uh East Coast. Uh is there is there a different like spotting style or way you, how you spot things versus East Coast versus West Coast? A thousand percent. West Coast has this thing called traction. And that's not everywhere on the West Coast. But by and large, the West Coast just has so much more traction. And, you know, like this trip to Moab, I specifically went not trying to bump it as much. You know, I wanted to test out um, the new build. I wanted to see what it would do. I wanted to see what it would crawl. And I had I had my wife with me a lot. And it just, you know, she wasn't really feeling send it at every turn. Sending it looks cool. And it looks good on video. And it makes good pictures. And it makes, it makes, it makes cool things for, for social media. But out there... You know, you've got these sheer rock walls, and you don't have to send it. Mm-hmm. You generally are going to either, A, you're going to crawl it because the tires grab on everything. It's the rock is sandpaper. Or you're going to just give it the Moab bump, which is basically about 12 to 18 inches off the ledge. Front tires come up, back off 12 inches, let her rip. And you just kind of bump it up. There's very few times mm-hmm. I, that you just say, absolutely freaking send it. That does not happen very often. Um, even going right up the middle on Rocker Knocker, you, you've got a, you got about half a second of full sin, and then you got to immediately back off because as soon as you get up, you don't want to go any further. You're going to hit a four foot rock wall in front of you and get whiplash. Um, so there's always a even when you're sending it out there, there's always still this modicum of I'm not going to go full floor pin here. Flip side of that is the East Coast, <laughs> where it is it is numerous places, numerous trails, numerous parks where you are like, okay, I'm going to set you up and you're just going to give it the freaking beans and you're going to stay on it. Um, and you're going to, if you're bouncing off the rev limiter, that's fine because I need your tires warm. I need you to spin off this crap. Like I need your tires going fast. So they stay cleaning because if you try to roll it slow, you're just going to bog your tires down and club up the club up the, you're just going to, you're just going to junk it all up. So, you know, speed becomes necessary in tire and wheel spin. And it's just totally different. And and the rock out here, you don't grab it like that. Momentum is your absolute best friend in low traction situations, which is where we always seem to find ourselves on the East Coast. But it is what it is. You're not you're not crawling nearly as much stuff uh, in the Eastern United States as you are in the Western United States, for sure. You're also going to get way dirtier on the East Coast. God love it. I freaking hate mud, but that is what it is. It it is what it is. Even if it's been dry for a week, some of these trails can, especially like at Windrock, uh, just stay yep. soupy, and it's it's pretty gross. Oh, it's tight, um, but more than that, um, it's just it's just so different. Yeah, tight trees everywhere. Usually some Everywhere. sheer drop offs, and, and the stuff we have out here, mm-hmm. uh, it's not just the mud you have to worry about. The rock itself is slick. I don't know what they they call Moab slick rock, but what we've got is actual <laughs> slick rock. Dude, you um, so get a sidewall on a rock here, you're liable active. to cut your sidewall. Yeah. And Absolutely. you get a you get a rock on the sidewall here, you got you're watching it, you're concerned. You get a rock on a sidewall in Moab and it's like yeah. traction. <laughs> you're doing it on purpose. You get it out <laughs> oh, on the East yeah, Coast, you're like, oh, I do working. not want to be here. I do not want to yeah. be here right now. It's just totally different. Completely different. I like yeah. both. I like both. Well, that you've got it's just different. Roots, like I've seen some jagged roots stick out. Um even and without take out tires. on like a hard obstacle, yep. I've seen jagged roots. Yeah, take out tires. Uh, so I, I think have, I've seen it. Yep. spotting on the East Coast just requires a lot more active, uh, I guess, active spotting, but active, actively paying attention, actively looking at things. Because in Moab, I feel like if you're off the line, you're off the line. You back up, you do it again. Here, once yep. you get off the line, it can kick the rear end sideways. Your front can go sideways. Next thing you know, like you're in a spot where you got a tire in the air. So many things that can go wrong out here. So maybe one day we'll have the good debate of East Coast versus West Coast wheeling. But I think there, I mean, it's just two totally, I don't even think it's comparable to be really, I think it's apples and oranges. Um, Trying to two, it's totally different different things, but yeah, yeah. I don't say one is harder than the other or easier than the other um, because out Mm -hmm. West, the stuff just seems like it's bigger. So I just think it's different. I've, I've gone beyond. East yeah. coast is bad. East coast, east is least, or west is bad. I don't go that anymore. I just—it's so different. Uh, I think racing is really what did that for me. 
Um, it's just so different. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't even compare them anymore other than to contrast yeah. them. That's about no, it. Yeah. yeah. So different. <laughs> yeah. Is there a, um, is there a point where you were a story you want to share? That's just like your worst spotting experience, either as a driver or as the spotter. Uh, I got one of each. So, oh, let's and these are, these are, these are, you can probably laugh at them. Cause one of them was me. I should have just not, this is the thing of trusting a spotter. I shouldn't have trusted this spotter. So I was at an event in Moab years ago and these pictures made it around the internet. So I was like a dummy going to attempt the devil's hot tub in a, uh, in a Jeep with a three, six, uh, I had no business in there with not enough whoop pow and way too big of tires, but I had the big boy. I had the bigger, I don't even remember what axles I had back then, but, um, I, I, I dropped right in there and I was like, you know what? Screw it. It was like lunchtime. I was like, I'm going to do it. Nobody else wanted to do it. So I got into devil's hot tub and I had the line, man. I, I tried it several times. I thought I was going to get it. Like, I know a lot of people get in devils and the worry is endowing backwards, but I knew the line. I knew where to start and where to go. And I wasn't worried about that. Um, but eventually I broke a, I broke a right rear axle shaft. So I was like, all right, I, I got to back out of this. So I had a guy that was at the event with us. Um, and I, I, I thought I, he was a relatively experienced wheeler. He wasn't experienced on that trail. This was hell's revenge. Um, and you know, I said, Hey, I just need you to watch my passenger tire as I come out. Cause I need to come out kind of driver this, you know, passenger, passenger side out driver back. And I need to kind of be angled. I need to kind of come up this wall and then I'm going to have to do all the driver and come back. He said, okay, okay, okay. So as I'm coming back, my passenger got high on the tub, the back of the tub. And I stopped the Jeep and I said, Hey man, I, I need to know how close I am to dropping. Cause this is getting, I'm, I'm off here. Like I, my insides know when a Jeep is going to roll. I've done it before. <laughs> and I felt it coming to that point. And I'm like, man, I only got, I'm within two or three degrees here of, of taking a nap. And he goes, no, 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 you're good. You're good. Come on back. Just, just roll up. You're, you're good. Just keep it cut driver, which means the passenger still coming up this wall. And he's telling me it's going to drop and it's Moab traction everywhere. And it didn't drop. It just kept climbing and it just kind of went bloop, and it just laid me down. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't get out of the Jeep. So I sat there, I made a couple of jokes about it spilling my coffee a little bit. Um, I ended up shutting off the engine real quick, cracking my Gatorade and drinking while they were trying to recover me. Uh, and it was kind of a funny thing. It just is what it is. I mean, you just, I didn't do that much damage to it. This was in Reaper. Um, but they got me back over and I backed out and we ended up, you know, I got back, ended up running the trail cause I'd broken the axle shaft. So really all I had to do at that point was just engage the locker and we got it back into Moab and it was just an axle shaft. So, and the body damage was light. I mean, I got it fixed, but, um, yeah, I kind of went against my better judgment and listened to somebody thinking, okay, well they're seeing something I'm not seeing. So I'm just going to trust that they're telling me that. And just as something as simple as him not understanding the traction that you get in Moab led to me kind of going over uh that was me as a driver me as a spotter um was again i should have known better (laughs) this is the uh this is like that colin coward show where doug was right where doug was wrong we should make that a segment so i'm at another event colorado coming down a super not hard obstacle we had gone up it earlier in the day i think it was holy cross and there was this guy driving and I think he even owns an off-road shop now, or he did at the time where he worked in an off-road shop, do a super experienced tech. And he had a, he had a older Jeep and I just assumed that he would just know what to do. Right. Like, so I didn't really worry about telling him every single instruction and what we were doing at this obstacle was you could ride this V notch down, or I could get you a little bit off, off angle and it would lift a rear tire and we were freezing people. Um, and what I would do is be like, look, just tap the brake. It'll pull it up and then just let off and roll through. And we had people taking pictures just to get that one little like picture because, you know, you don't want to just nail the brakes and then boop, that's bad. So I told everybody's like, look, just as you as you come down, you're going to want to tap the brakes. Um, we'll get the picture. Just roll on out. Uh, but whatever you do, don't stomp on the brakes. Well, he was in the back and I didn't think I had to tell him that I should have told him that he had I'd come to find out he had never. This was in a jail. He had never wheeled a four door jail before. He had wheeled like old, old vehicles, like YJ's. He, had, he knew all that stuff. So as soon as I got him up, we got him going. We got the picture and I just kind of backed up and didn't say anything. Just kind of let him roll down. And as soon as he started coming down, he kind of panic braked and just jammed the brakes. 
and it leaned driver front into the V. It didn't completely roll over, but it leaned driver front into the V and damaged the hood a little bit. And uh, again, completely on me because I should have known, you know, I should have said, you know, but again, I didn't want to hurt anybody's ego because you get to some people sometime and you're trying to tell them what they're doing. Like, I don't need a spotter. I got this. And you're like, all right, whatever, Superman. And he didn't do that. That was not what this guy did. Defending him, he did not say that. I just assumed, hey, this guy's in the industry. He knows stuff. He's probably done this before. No big deal. I'm just going to let him go. And that was, you know, that was me as a, as a not spotter, enough spotter, just assuming he kind of knew things. And then when he panic braked, it was over. It was everybody just get out of the way. Um, we got him over and we didn't even have to winch him. It was that, it was that little, it just, it was just that little. We had three, we just had, we just got like two guys on the, and popped them back over and off he went. And, and he knew what he did. I went up to his window right after he came back down on all fours and he knew what he did. And I was like, yeah, I should have, I didn't even know that you hadn't, or I asked him. And he goes, man, I'd never driven this before. I was like, son of a, <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> so both of those oh, were technically man. on me. A uh, little too much trust when I shouldn't have. And then a little, I think it was both times, trusting a driver a little too much to know and not say something. And then trusting a spotter that didn't have, you know, trusting that experience that he didn't have. And uh, somebody else paid for it one time and I paid for it one time. So it all evens out. Yeah. But if you haven't made a mistake as a driver or a spotter, you ain't driving and spotting enough. <laughs> It's just, you're just no. not. <laughs> and those are just the stories no, that come to that, mind. That comes like, with the I mean, experience. They're, they're out there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And there's only one way to get experience and it's to get experience. Like mm -hmm. there's really no other way to do it. And yeah. sometimes it just is. Just sometimes you get experienced by bad things. It just happens. Yeah. And the cool part about the offer community is it, it is pretty t close and tight knit. Um, and most people do go wheeling, especially like places, Moab, Colorado, stuff like that with the idea that some things could go wrong. Um, if you go there thinking everything is going to be perfect the entire time, you're probably mistaking a little bit because it might, it definitely might go completely right the entire time, but it also might go completely wrong the entire time. Um, so typically I feel like most people, especially, you know, Jeepers are, are pretty close knit. And if you do make that mistake on one end or the other, there's some forgiveness there. Um, I don't know of too many people Sometimes, that have been yeah. royally butthurt um, for oh, I'm, bad yeah, spotting on, on either side. <laughs> I had one that got you mad know? at me because they hit their skid plate. And That's that was a line, like for. you just go up. I, I know, I know, and they were they were not happy that they their skid plate. Uh, they were not happy with me, and then I had one out in Moab who we pulled up to Axel Hill on Pritchett Canyon, and he's I come up behind him, and I'm like, this guy's like ghost white, and I've spotted him up some other stuff. It was a fresh build. He had built it for like one tire size, and then decided he wanted a bigger tire, so he completely did. It was a Bob Bed JT with like 43 Pro XSs on it. Like the thing was Axel swap. Like this thing was ready to party. Um, but in typical case with Jeeps, myself included, the Jeep usually out capabilities, the driver, and he was not super familiar with this rig. And I know the line on Axel Hill and I'm like, okay, you got to get up here. We're going to put your front tires. As soon as you hit, feel the back tires hit, you turn about 45 degrees, right? And you just freaking stay in it. Like that's the line there. Um, because for some reason, the, the rock that leads up to the second shelf of Axel Hill, it looks like every other rock in Moab, but it's like the only rock in Moab you have no traction on. You just, it's just, it's smooth. Um, so you nail it, you nail it. And as you, as your back tires hit the back of the rock, you jerk the wheel, right. And about 45 degrees, you just you hit it right. Um, you don't want to take a 90 because then you're off in about a 20 foot culvert. Um, so, and he's like, are you sure? I was like, dude, I got you, I got you, man. Like, do you need me to go up there? Like whatever. I was like, this is your Jeep is built for this. You're going to be fine. And I said, you know, here, when you feel this, do this, do that. And he goes and the dude one shots it. And he gets up at the top and then gets out of the Jeep and he's like freaking shaking, but like in a good way. And he didn't come on the hard rides the rest of the week, but every time I saw him, he had a smile on his face and he was like, man, that was so cool. I was I appreciate you doing that. I had a good time. And, but that was one of those times it was like you, you spotted somebody to doing something they had no business or they thought they had no business doing it just because of that visual intimidation. But again, the experience knowing I've been spotted up Axel Hill, I have spotted up Axel Hill. I've rolled up on Axel Hill a couple of years ago behind Will Perriman and we didn't have a spotter, but we wanted to be done. And we were the front two rigs in the row. So yeah. he just goes up and one shots it. And I come up right behind him and I go, I'm like, all right, let's go. And off we went. No spotter. We didn't yeah. wait for it. It was just the two of us up front. So I've done that obstacle many different ways. So I knew where he needed to go, 
but good on him. He trusted me. He didn't know that. I mean, he'd never met me before. He just knew me as that guy from Outlaw Offer, that guy from YouTube or whatever. But he put his trust in me, and, and he did it, and he drove it the right way. And that's an experience I'm sure he'll never forget. So you, you got the days when I messed up, and then you got the days when it's pretty awesome to be a spotter, to get somebody up their first obstacle. They had no intentions or thoughts that they could do it, and then to see their face when they get out doing it, it's freaking awesome. That is, that part is really cool. Yeah. You'll probably see that face on me quite a bit when uh, the LJ's done. <laughs> That's just because it's actually going to be done and driving under its own power. (laughs) Yeah. You're going to have that look at the parking lot of the freaking Harris Teeter. Be like, it's driving. Right. (laughs) And I don't, don't, I'm not saying I blame you. I've never wheeled, I never wheeled the the LJ before we did all the work to it. Um, But being at pretty close to 112 inch wheelbase on 42s, like I just, I've never wheeled that before. So. It's going to be fun. So I might be uh, trusting you as my spotter here soon. Um, oh, man. We, we had a couple of rigs out there that coming up soon, So it'll be pretty fun to take that out on. That 110 to 112 wheelbase. We had a couple rigs in that in that zone in Moab, and they were just, mm. man, those things can party. <laughs> it could just go. Yeah. Well, Mike that, from that Red Kit, I mean, that's Moab. his LJ. His LJ is about that wheelbase. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and, he's I'm, right you there. know, if you haven't seen the video on, on Facebook, he just – Launched that thing out of the hot tub like a freaking rocket ship. It was insane. I did see front that. wheels. That was awesome. Ten feet off the ground. I'm like, Up. man, that boy is getting yeah. it with that. Well, he's. I mean, he's also LS. He's LSX swapped. I think he has a six six direct injected. Um, yeah, six, LS six, in that yep. thing. Uh, man. But I mean, also, and he's a hell LJ of a driver. The party wagon, and it, he's a good driver. Yeah. It, they, he parties. The LJ is called mm-hmm. the party wagon. That that is, <laughs> it lives up to its name. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Along with his driver. So, uh, so you were talking about Pritchett Canyon, and uh, I think you mentioned Rocker Knocker too. There's um, there's been <laughs> there's a couple pictures I've been sharing around the Outlaw pages <laughs> of uh, Jesse from Outlaw for now. Jesse's JL. He's tipped over, and I made a couple memes about it. I, I made a couple jokes. Uh, what happened there? So yeah, I'm in that video, um, standing up a couple rock shelves over kind of where you start the line and he was being spotted and the, the, he, he did one thing wrong and one thing wrong only. Well, maybe two. So the rule number one of rocker knocker, the line that I've learned how to spot is you never turn the Jeep uphill, never turn passenger. Once you're locked in and you're kind of doing that Mm -hmm. dance, you keep it turned all driver because turning all driver is about 40 to 45 degrees of steering. But you've also got the Jeep at about 40, 45 degrees. So what that means is the top tire and the bottom tire are actually running parallel with the ledges. And you've got your passenger front tires up a ledge, your driver front tires down a ledge, and it, then your back tires get also do the same thing. Your passenger rear is on the same ledge as your driver front, and your driver rear is one ledge down. So you're actually one wheel, two wheel, one wheel. And you kind of get up, and it, and it feels weird. Um, I posted a video of one of the groups of, of me doing it in there and you just kind of see it. It goes up. I turn. I hit this one little rock where you go really super slow. I hit that. It slides down. And then you just see me work it out. Mm-hmm. And you actually see somebody was spotting me. I think it was actually Mike at RevKey. He's like, no, no, back it up. I'm like, no, no, we don't need to back it up. Watch this. And the driver front caught and up I went because I've, I've done that. I've, I know that line. And he, you see him just kind of move back and he goes, oh, it grabbed it, grabbed. You're good. You're good. And I just pulled right out. Um, but what you don't see is I never go, I never go passenger. And, um, I don't know if he was told to go passenger or if he just went passenger. Um, I was, I was a few feet away. Um, we had talked briefly about the line and how to do it. Um, I had talked to who was spotting him. I think it was Josh from Charlotte was spotting him. So I don't know if he was actually, I don't know if Josh saw something and wanted him to turn uphill. Um, but I mean, when I was there, it happened super, super slow. In the video, you see me, I don't even move. I just. I just watch it happen, and I was like, "It's going over." Like I, there was nothing I could do. And then you just have me keep me. You see me kind of after it settles. You see me just kind of casually walk over there because I mean I knew what it was, um, and I talked to him a little bit after he got out. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it was just he turned uphill. That's all it was. And when you turn uphill, there's a little rock that's it that'll grab your driver front, and it slides down. And because you're not turned into the the the, the roll, mm-hmm. so to speak, um, it rolls more easily. So it just kind of rolled him over. And it, and it is what it is. So I, I can guarantee you he won't do it again. And in fact, not a long time later, we backed him off 
and we let the oil sit for a while and then we ran the motor for a little while and then we got him back on it. And by that time it was me and Jeremy Purick there spotting him. Mm-hmm. And Jeremy was telling him the line and I was just kind of there calming him down. Be like, look, you're locked in, man. You're good. You're good. You're locked in. You're not going anywhere. And then Jeremy just kind of telling him where to go. Cause the last thing you want is two people telling you where to go. Um, Cause then you're like, who the hell do I listen to? Now we would have told him the same thing. Um, but at that time, the next time he went on it, I was on his driver's side at his, not at his window, but pretty freaking close. And Jeremy was up um, kind of where you would spot from kind of up from the top of the rocker knocker rock. And he went right up it. Now he did feel weird, but good on him for doing it and not, you know, he had just rolled over at that spot. So that's gotta be mentally playing with him a little bit, but yeah, I think it was just, he turned, he definitely turned uphill. I saw the tire turn uphill and that's when I said, that's going over and you can just watch it. It seems fast on the video. I remember it way slower, um, but that's generally how it is. And as soon as it went over, I was like, yeah, you just, you just can't turn uphill there. You just can't do it. So uh, valuable lesson. Yeah. So, I mean, I was actually, I, day, I watched those videos a couple times um, and I thought it was pretty slow. As soon as I, I saw the same thing, as soon as I saw the tire come uphill, I'm like, mm, he's about to roll it. And yeah, sure gone. enough, just yep. like slow motion, just we luckily mm-hmm. he's okay. And, and you do, um, your yeah. body wants to turn into it. Your body wants to turn uphill. Um, you, you can't explain it on a video. I, I can't explain it. Like I've been in a lot of weird situations in Jeeps um uphill angle down here angle off camber just i've rolled them like i've done really really sketchy crap in a jeep and even for me when i get on rocker knocker even still i'm like damn this feels weird <laughs> like it just your internals <laughs> just don't like that angle yeah. because you're pitched sideways mm-hmm. but you're also it's just it, it, looking outside you're like dude shut up you're totally stable and i tell people that i'll tell like look you're totally fine like the jeep looks good you're good. They ain't listening to you. Like they're just not listening. <laughs> um, I've had people like yeah. literally come off that option. Like I'm not doing it. And then you have to get them back, calm them down, talk to them. And like, look, just, I got you. And uh, yeah, I think he would have had it. He was probably two feet from the driver front catching in the notch. Um, but yeah, he just turned uphill on that little, there's just this little baby head, this little chicken head that comes out off the second ledge and that driver front hit it and it, he turned into it and it just puts you up. And as it drops down off of that, um, I think he probably nailed the brakes a little bit too. As he dropped off, he kind of freaked out and nailed the brakes and turned up. Um, and then just he just went over. But everybody was okay. The Jeep continued to wheel the rest of the week. He was fine. Um, nobody else was in the Jeep. It was just Jesse. Um, he did have to hug his son after that. He came up and wanted a hug from his dad. <laughs> little Bubba, little six-year-old <laughs> son. was a little, little freaked out dad was in the Jeep when yeah. it went over. And I get that. I get yeah. that. My son would probably be the same way. Yeah. But um, I think once they got over the initial kind of, uh, everybody was like, okay. And, and stuff does. That. Jesse pushes that Jeep, man. He absolutely does. He absolutely pushes that Jeep and good on him for doing it. And when you push him, when you push him hard enough and long enough, um, eventually you're going to run out of talent. Whether it's a spotter, whether it's a driver, or whether it's a little bit of both, you're going to run out of talent. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> I've, done, I've done that. Um, and it just is what it is. But it does make for great content. It makes for amazing, amazing it content. Does. So good on you for taking advantage Jesse of the situation. The, the last, yeah, yeah, ambulance chaser. <laughs> yeah, I, I told Jesse the one I posted yesterday to all the all the pages would be the last one, and and uh, it was, I I saw it was just something on TikTok I saw trending, and then the like the some weird clown like making like a super surprised face and then smiling, and it was like uh, when you accidentally roll the family JL and it's like, but your wife told you no new parts until you break in. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that. Uh, I did see. Oh, I had two or three was, people that started talking crap just, to me. They're like, dude, you were right there. Why didn't you stop him? It was your fault. <laughs> like, th- there's nothing to stop once it starts. Like, there's ah, no you, to, well, yeah, yeah, that's what, well, they no just, there, but that. there is nothing to stop certain people that I know from giving me hell, no matter what, like, <laughs> right. There's probably right. a vehicle on its side in Moab right now. And I'm going to get blamed for it. It's kind of like the whole hashtag I blame Scott. Scott gets blamed for everything. Yeah. Like, I actually found out a couple weeks ago that yeah. my new Chevy truck doesn't have one of those cigarette lighter ports to power my little camera for my trailer. It's it's obviously Scott's ah, fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is a GM product. I get that. I still blame Scott. <laughs> Scott doesn't even work. Scott. It's, it's his, his fault. fault. Doesn't matter. I blame Scott. That'll be that'll be a Does future. That'll be a future shirt. Is I blame Doug. Um, so what are, what are, what is your recommendation other than, um, 
or is there anything other than just experience of of getting good at spotting? No, I I mean that's the number one. I mean, again, other than if you're just naturally gifted to see lines, but I, I don't really know. Even the people that I know that see lines got that talent from experience. Um it's all experience. And it's not even just I'm not even saying you have to have experience on that particular trail, that particular obstacle, just general off-road experience on trails that do things to Jeeps that do things to, you know, I was spotting people. There was an obstacle on metal masher. I was spotting people differently based on what they were coming with. Like there was a, there was a four door line specifically. And I had a two door come up to, I was like, bro, no, <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll, I will. If you really want to do it, I full disclaimer, if you miss this, you're going backwards. Like, it's just going, I know this is going to happen. That's your line over there. We can make it a little harder if you want, but I'm telling you right now, you don't have the wheelbase for this. Um, but then there's just as many obstacles out there. They're like, no, four doors too much, or no, the gladiators too much or the break up. You know, there's, there are just certain things, you know, you need to have that experience, understanding how geometry works, understanding how suspension works, understanding what role tire size plays, what role, you know, is it okay if I don't have a front locker like on a Gladiator Mojave versus is this an obstacle that needs two lockers or is this an obstacle that needs any lockers or, you know, or, or in certain cases like Rocker Knocker, it can help to turn off the front locker so that you can climb with one and let the other slide. Like there's there's all kinds of time, you know, digs and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, there's levels. You don't just immediately become a really, really good spotter. Um, you can you can become a decent spotter at easier stuff pretty easily. Um but there certainly is levels of experience for sure. You know, scale of one to 10, whatever, um, you know, 10 being trail guru. So yeah, I wouldn't say, let's say, say specific trail, specific obstacle, but definitely off road in general experience relative to the environment you're in, i.e. West coast versus East coast rocks versus saying that, that kind of stuff, just to know how the vehicle is going to react. Because then I think that is the building, the key building block to seeing lines is being able to kind of mentally watch a vehicle go through an obstacle in your mind and know kind of what it's going to do and then be right. Uh, we can all kind of mentally watch that in our minds. It doesn't mean you're right. You could be absolutely wrong and you end up, you know, Indo in a Jeep or a Bronco or a Toyota or whatever. So um, yeah, I think being able to do that based off experience and understanding dynamics, vehicle dynamics, I'd probably say is number one. Yeah, I would venture to say that the better you become as a spotter as well, also is going to translate to being a better driver. Um, 100%. Then you kind of get a feel inside and outside the vehicle, but you you kind of you can close your eyes and think, okay, I've ran this line before. I know what I want to do, where I want to go. So let me just try to put my, let me try to aim everything as if I were outside the Jeep doing this. Um, and just slowing down. No like, doubt. There's really no need to be in a rush when you're off-road. Um, and I think that's what causes a lot of problems too. Of course, a lot of people want to go fast and they want to get through a long trail. You know, they don't want to spend all day on the trail. Um, but rushing through something and, and not thinking it through is what gets most people in trouble. Yeah. And you're a hundred percent right. That good being a spotter makes you a better driver because you start to understand be based on experience that you've seen a Jeep in a weird spot that it doesn't actually, you know, that it actually doesn't look weird outside the Jeep. It might feel weird and you can start to yeah. learn to overcome those feelings of, because if you can overcome the feelings of this doesn't feel good and you can just trust what you know, um, you're absolutely a better driver. And you can do things that you wouldn't have been able to do before just by knowing, like me, you know, I like to, you know, again, if you're at the front of the line, you don't get a spotter. Okay, I need to put my driver tire here and then I need to do this. And I slam it into M2 and I turn on, you know, and I do the thing and I off I go. Um, but a lot of that too is like, okay, I remember I did this last time or I've seen an obstacle mm -hmm. like this before. Uh, I know it's going to get off camber, but maybe I'm watching my gauges and I see I'm only, you know, there was times where I was like facing downhill and I'm like, I, I it felt weird. And then I look at the gauge and I'm only like 27, 28 degrees down. And I'm like, I've had this thing at 36 to 38. This is nothing. Oh, yeah, you're Keep good. going. <laughs> just that experience of knowing, yeah, no, I'm totally fine. Absolutely. Same thing with sideways, same thing with up. I mean, it's just that experience and you can look at it and go, all right, reality check. I'm actually fine. And then you just wheel on. Yeah. Yeah, and that was that was something that when I don't know if you ever remembered the uh, the action truck JK that I built. Um, yeah, I do absolutely years ago. This was two thousand yeah seventeen eighteen before I sold it. Uh, it had a rock crawler, three link front and rear, 
um I've ordered shocks. Like I did a lot of stuff to this thing. And that was one of those vehicles that I got so in tune with and synced with that I knew how far I could go before tires were lifting. And I had a lot of people like, Oh, you're about to roll. You're about to roll. I'm like, Nope. But dial indicator says I'm good for a little bit more. <laughs> and that yep, just came yep, with experience. Yep. Um, I put that Jeep in some really, really tough and awkward positions. Um, that felt horrible from the driver's seat, but I knew it was planted. So just carry on. That's good. That's how I was with Reaper but, for a long time. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting that way with 4699. Well, I've you gotten a lot better with 4699. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, you, oh, I did you dumb Reaper, stuff in Reaper. You had, well, not just that, we but were like you, you were along with Reaper every build stage of every possible oh, build stage. You went through that. I turned um, the from wrenches. Stock I mean, obviously, I helped. To, but yeah, it was amazing. I mean, you. Yeah, we were. We were. You. You, you we felt forever the difference connected. every step of the way. Yeah, and then until you got to the, I think at the last point you were on forty twos, custom axles, custom suspension. Well, not custom, but rock crawler suspension, coilovers. Like, it's a bad rig. I love it. Um, it's but basic. We did get it's to the basic. end of this, and we did promise. We did promise the folks here a little surprise. Oh, was so that surprise time? You. Uh, it is surprise time, so I'll let you announce that here real quick before we head off. So, so we decided kind of during mob that um, we were going to do a t-shirt, and I said, "Man, this is a really good idea for a t-shirt. I've got to do this." And I had this abstract view of um, of just this little stick figure pointing, you know, driver, driver, no, your other driver, because I've said that so many times in my life, passenger, <laughs> passenger, no, your other passenger when they go driver. And I said, all right, we're going to make a T-shirt when I get home. I'm going to design this. We're going to do a spotter T-shirt. And it's going to be some type of graphic. I didn't have it fully formed in my head at the time. And multiple times throughout the week, I'd be spotting somebody, and I would do that. I would be like, okay, all right, go driver, driver. Because I never say left and right. I always It's always driver pass. Mm-hmm. I feel like that clicks quicker yeah. in people's heads. Um, so I would say driver, driver, and they'd go passenger. And I'd be like, your other driver. And they'd do something. I'd be like, look, don't be the T-shirt. And that got to being a joke by the end of the week. Everybody knew <laughs> that I was going to make this, this new T-shirt having to do with being, you know, a bad spot E. And you didn't want me to yell at you on an obstacle and say, don't be the T-shirt. It's kind of like that thing that Marvin and those guys do with wearing the pink helmet. If you got called the T-shirt, that, w- that was not good. You did not want to get called the T-shirt. So I, I kind of mulled it over on my way home. And, and by the time I got home, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do. And I messaged you and I was like, look, this is what I want to do. I want these three boxes and I want this stick figure here and I want this to do this. And you're like, Oh, love it. And like, in not much time flat, you were on it. So without further ado, uh, let's throw up the graphic here. Um, we have the, uh, the spotters being ignored since 1941 shirt that we are going to go ahead and put on presale, um, at the launch yeah. of this episode. Um, I've already, we've already got the design done. I've already approved the design. That's that is done deal. We have submitted it to our graphics, uh, people that print our shirts. They have done it. I think it's a, you, you can see it's a gray shirt, uh, blue design on there. Uh, a little nod to the 4 by 8 just because that's what I was driving when we came up with it. Um, but, you know, obviously we'll have the, you know, the standard battle flag on there is all offered, outlaw for a shirt to do. But it's just our funny take on, you know, because if you've been off-road, you've heard this. Driver, driver, your other driver. Passenger, passenger. No, your other passenger. You've heard this. A thousand times. (laughs) And it is almost the biggest inside joke of the off-road community. And I'm kind of shocked that the way he's made it a shirt. I was like, you know, now we're going to do this. Maybe we're going to start a movement. Like, don't be the t-shirt. Or or maybe even you want to go be the t-shirt. I don't know. So we are going to go ahead and launch that right now, right here, right now for pre-sale. I'll probably lock out pre-sale probably next week sometime. And we expect to have all Mm -hmm. shirts in and ready to ship by the end of this month, by the end of June. Right now, in the first week of June, uh, we will have all of those in-house ready to ship the first the first batch out by the end of this month, probably a little earlier because we are going to then release sometime right after that our 4th of July, um, our Independence Day red, white, and blue shirt, um, which I've already mm-hmm. got the design for that, but we'll get to that later. And then sometime once they um, – we'll probably throw this up next week, the Trail Bra shirt. <laughs> Yeah. Those are currently in production, yeah, having the right on. color. They basically, the, the, the shirts came yeah. in too light of a blue, and it looked like a little baby blue. So they kind of altered the colors, mm-hmm. thinking that's what I would want, and I, I hated it. I didn't like it. 
So um, she's like, well, I got these shirts. So I was like, well, we'll give, we'll just give them away. So if you see people in all the yeah. Mob Moab pictures, like these light blue shirts with outlaw logos on the left chest, that's the trail brush shirt. But the shirt itself is actually a darker blue. Um, and then I think the the spotter shirt will be gray. But so we'll have the trail bra shirt coming very, very soon. Obviously, we've got the spotter shirt that's going to go on pre-sale uh, right now. And then we'll have our we'll have our Fourth of July shirt out soon. So we got some pretty cool ones coming out. But I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I really like the trail bra shirt. It's pretty funny, too, for me. But I'm really excited about the spotter it shirt. Is. I hope that it catches is. on and a bunch of people buy them or whatever because uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just I'm, freaking hilarious. I've lived yeah. that life. No, I'm excited for all the, <laughs> so, the upcoming merch we have. Uh, those those can be found at theoutlawoffroad.com slash merch. Um, we'll throw a little plug in there. I will link it below, uh, but those will be available soon. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to design stuff like this. I'm exi- excited to announce it on the podcast and give you guys, give listeners the very first chance to scoop this one up. The last time we did a pre-sale on, uh, I think it was the shift hoodies. Um, we actually ran out yeah, of those pretty yeah. quickly. Um, uh, so you guys will be the very first ones to know about this, be the very first ones to get your orders in. And then after we close it down, uh, we'll, we'll take regular orders, but we'll make sure to get your guys' stuff out first so you can rock it yeah. and, uh, then tell everyone to listen to dirt to dust on every possible platform you can think of We're right here on YouTube, obviously videos, uh, YouTube has a new section called YouTube podcast. It was formerly Google play. Uh, we can find be found there. We can be found on Apple podcast and of course, Spotify, Everything, everywhere, all the places. everywhere you want to all be, the places. we're there. All the places. Yep. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys, everybody, for listening, for watching, wherever it is. Uh, do remember, if you're on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when the videos come out. Uh, standard schedule is main episode every Wednesday and with our special episodes and or our mailbag on Friday. We have been a little weird on the schedule last couple of weeks just because of Mob Moab, but um, I know I am in town for a little while now, and we are going to be able to go – about our schedule as we previously did. And we are stacking up a serious episode count. We're definitely getting some content going here. So love seeing that love got that going. As we said before, we do have the interview. We are going to make the, uh, we are going to make the episode with JP on the mob Moab wrap up happen. Talk about Mob Moab. And um, we are already setting dates and locations and trails for basically the same type of event uh, in a different location next year. Uh, 20, be, be, a, be up and looking for mm-hmm. that episode and actually there's going to be I believe two events now in 2025 along with an outlaw off-road specific event at Windrock Park in Tennessee uh, tentatively setting that for September now more details coming on that be an opportunity to get out there and wheel with everybody wheel with you guys wheel with the listeners wheel with just wheel with anybody and everybody and do some cool stuff out at Windrock um, kind of like we did yeah, at Mob Moab so stay tuned in for that um, keep watching Keep showing us the love, like, do all the comments, do all those reviews. Um, do remember to drop questions if you got them. Uh, we do have a couple that I've already seen for the next mailbag episode because we do like to get that content from you guys. Also, episode ideas if you got them. Feel free to drop them. Uh, if it's a good one, I promise we'll use Absolutely. it. If it's not a good one, I promise we won't use it. <laughs> if it sucks, it sucks. We're not going to use it. <laughs> but if it doesn't suck, yeah, we'll probably use it. We'll it's probably use it because, you know, I'm only but yeah. so creative. So people help me out, all right? Um, I'm already stealing some of Caleb's life force when it comes to marketing and creativity. And he's got enough to give for now, but you guys don't want me taking all of it. It'd be like a little trolls movie where they're taking the, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, that and you're not a member of a boy band. So we're not. Yeah. Right. Tell me you have a six-year-old kid without telling you have a six-year-old kid. We make troll movie references on this podcast, boys. <laughs> all right. That's how we're going to yeah, leave it. Appreciate you guys I mean, tuning yeah. in, spending your hour with us. We uh we love you all. We appreciate you all. We thank you all over and over and over again. That's how we're going to leave it. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Dirt to Dust. Thank you all. We're out. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.